I think we all like a good giant. Now, you don't get much bigger than a blue whale, but you do get stranger. There is something just so captivating about the elusive giant squid. Not only are they large, they are also very mysterious. We have many questions about these deep sea creatures, and one of the big questions is, how big can they get? It's probably the most requested how big video in the comments. And today, our special guest, marine biologist Maria from the YouTube channel Sea and Me, has kindly agreed to join and help us answer this question. Hi everyone, I'm Maria, a marine biologist and science communicator. The deep sea has a very special place in my heart, so I'm really happy to talk to you about one of its giants. The giant squid, or Architeuthis, was first photographed by Reverend Moses Harvey in 1873 in Newfoundland, Canada. He took the famous photo of it drooping out of the bathtub. While it took more than a century to get an image of a living giant squid, we did have many carcasses washing up on beaches throughout the years. Not just in Newfoundland, but all over the world. When you look at the wide distribution, it really seems like Architeuthis is found around the planet. But are we looking at the same species here? Well, it has been proposed by some that there are multiple species of the giant squid. And I'm not even referring to the colossal squid. Yet. There are varying estimates of how many different species of Architeuthis are out there, with some estimates going up to 19 distinct species, while in the early 2000s, many researchers believed there was only three. But a study from the University of Copenhagen seems to suggest that there is only one. They took 43 samples of giant squid tissue from around the world, from the coast of Spain, South Africa, the South Pacific, and the Sea of Japan, and found almost no genetic difference. So, if they're all the same species, could size still vary depending on where they are found? Could certain areas produce bigger giants? Yeah, absolutely. Differences in body sizes between different populations is widespread in the animal kingdom. Different populations from the same species subjected to different environmental conditions and diets will probably develop different physical attributes and that includes their size. And giant squids are probably no different. Food availability and water temperature influence how big a squid can get. So it wouldn't be surprising that warmer waters with more food would breed bigger giants. However, even though probable, we still don't have a big enough sample of individuals from different populations to test this hypothesis. So how large can giant squid get? Well, let's start with length specifically total length, from the top of the mantle to the bottom of a tentacle? Well, it seems to depend on who you ask. In the book Monarchs of the Sea, the extraordinary 500 million year history of cephalopods, Dana Staff states they can reach almost 40 feet, 12.2 meters, but 25 feet, 7.62 meters is far more common. So 40 feet is certainly long, but there are a variety of estimates that are much longer. The Smithsonian Ocean suggests a giant squid could potentially reach 66 feet, 20 meters. National Geographic says 59 feet, and factsanddetails.com states 60 feet, about 18 meters. A report titled A Guide to Common Deep Sea Invertebrates in New Zealand Waters states on page 127 that the max length is about 13 meters, 43 feet. So I suppose to start, what would be the largest squid that washed up? And how did we measure it? Is it easy for people to measure them incorrectly and throw off the numbers? Is that why we are getting so many varying estimates? The largest squid ever reliably measured by scientists was 13 meters long. But that doesn't mean that there aren't bigger ones out there. There are some challenges in determining the actual size of these giants. For one, they might have a wide range of body sizes. For example, we know that females are usually larger than males. And just like in almost all other animals of the world, younger individuals are usually smaller than older individuals. So individuals of different sexes at different life stages will probably have different body sizes. But this variability in the reported length 
of giant squid individuals might also come from issues with measuring these animals. But who better to talk about this than an actual cephalopod expert? Here is my friend Miguel, a marine biologist who specialized in deep sea cephalopods. So there are a couple of reasons for why measuring cephalopods can be a difficult task. But to make a long story short, first of all, there is the important difference between actual measurements of real individuals and estimates based on predictive equations that only use certain body parts, usually the beak. While equations can be useful, we do need to be aware that uh, there is an error associated with it. But uh, even measuring real individuals comes with its own set of uh, challenges. These animals are rarely seen in a healthy state. Uh, so far, only once they have been seen alive and healthy. And uh, all specimens have been so far measured dead. Some were even already decomposing and missing limbs, which means that uh, they may have been even bigger when they were alive. We also have to take into consideration also that uh, they have a soft body with extendable body parts. And it's likely that when people measure the dead specimens, the squid's body had changed shape and size. Okay, thank you very much, Miguel, for that information. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Miguel. Guys, go check out his work. So one thing that interests me a lot about giant squid, apart from how big they get, is how many there are. And I'm pretty shocked by some of the estimates. It seems that since giant squid are so rare, you might think there aren't that many of them. And considering they live at estimated depths of 700 to 1000 meters, it would be difficult to do a survey, but there are ways. When searching inside sperm whales' stomachs, researchers have found giant squid beaks. Lots of them. Hundreds. Returning again to the book Monarchs of the Sea, The Extraordinary 500 Million Year History of Cephalopods, Dana Staff states, If each sperm whale in the ocean were to eat one giant squid a week, more than 18 million giant squid would be eaten by sperm whales every year. But consumption might be far more frequent than that. Scientists have estimated that throughout the world's oceans, sperm whales might be eating 3.6 million giant squid every single day. That's more than a billion giant squid a year. With so many giant squid in the ocean, do we really have a good sample size of carcasses to judge how big they can get? The reality is not really. The problem with these types of species like giant squids or any type of deep sea animal that we rarely see is that it's really hard to estimate what we don't know because we have such a small sample size. So considering all the data that we do have, what would be our maximum estimate for the size of a giant squid? Because of all the reasons mentioned before, it's really difficult to estimate how long the longest giant squid might be. Even experts don't agree with each other. Based on the size of recovered giant squid beaks, some estimate that larger individuals might reach lengths of 20 meters. However, there are those who say that this is probably an overestimation, since no specimen even close to that size has ever been seen. I guess we'll have to wait for the data future deep sea exploration will give us. Now you can't really just talk about the giant squid and not mention the colossal squid, which is an entirely different species. Unlike the giant squid that is found all around the world, the colossal squid is found in the southern oceans. The discovery of the colossal squid in the winter of 1924 to 25 was initially based on two arm crowns found in a sperm whale's stomach. This marked the beginning of our understanding of the elusive creature. However, it took decades to find a complete specimen. As I said, it predominantly inhabits the southern oceans and, according to cephalopods of the world, can reach an estimated size of 9 to 10 meters, about 30 to 33 feet. These are estimates based on predictive equations, however. The longest dimensions ever actually measured were 6 meters, about 19.6 feet. But even the longer estimate is still shorter than the giant squid. But mass remains a critical factor. If we look at the giant and colossal squid fact sheet, it reveals that while the maximum weight for a female giant squid is around 275 kilos, 606 pounds, a colossal squid has been confirmed at a staggering 495 kilos, or 1,091 pounds, with some upper estimates reaching 600 to 700 kilos so 1,300 to 1,500 pounds. 
So even ignoring the larger estimates, the largest confirmed colossal squid surpasses the largest giant squid in terms of overall mass. Now, maybe there are bigger giant squid yet to be found, but the same could be said for the colossal squid. So to summarize, the giant is the longest, reaching a maximum total length of at least 13 meters, with some kind of controversial estimates putting its max near 20 meters. So the true total length is probably in that range. And from what I've read from a lot of different squid scientists, it's probably closer to 13 than to 20, with a max weight put usually under 300 kilos or 660 pounds. Of course, a long giant close to the 20 meter mark would be heavier, but it still might not be enough to outweigh a colossal squid. The colossal may only get to 6 meters 20 feet, or maybe it gets closer to the 10 meters 33 feet. But either way, it is bulkier and heavier, and is closer to 500 kilos, 1100 pounds, or maybe bigger ones are out there. And that leads me to one more question. Clearly, the deep sea is mysterious. So much so, it's hard to even give a clear answer to the title of this video. So I wonder, just for the sake of curiosity, is there a possibility that a larger squid or a cephalopod could exist in our ocean that we haven't discovered yet? Okay, so it is possible, but unlikely. And here's why. Actually, there are two main reasons. For an animal that big to exist in an area with not so much food available, like the deep sea, it would have to have a very low metabolism. Now, this is not impossible for cephalopods. However, this brings me to my second point. If there were a hyper-colossal squid out there, we would probably have already seen signs of its existence like we did the giant squid or the colossal squid even before we ever recorded one live. This would be especially true for an animal with low metabolism, because it would probably also be slower, therefore easier to catch on camera or by nets. A massive thank you to Maria for her contribution to this video. And to Miguel, there is a great paper he published about the colossal squid that helped a lot with this video. His work is linked below, you should definitely take a look. But the adventure doesn't end here. We're diving into more deep sea mysteries and looking at another curious deep sea creature, a long one, and taking a look at if the majestic oarfish can truly sense earthquakes. Click the link and join us over at Maria's channel, Sea and Me, to see our other collaboration and find out more about the oarfish. Anyway, thank you so much to all my patrons and thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. Thank you very much, Thomas, aka Wild World, for having me on your channel.